<laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. My wife is walking through and was just like, hello, ladies. Oh, my. <laughs> you home? Hello. Yes, I just podcasted, okay, but not started okay. yet, so I'll make a cup of tea later. Oh, thanks. Love you. <laughs> Came in with the Valvinas, oh. you have to respect that. You, have, you, yeah. have, you can make it a cup of tea now, Phil, if you fought the brownie <laughs> points, do you know? Yeah, I was going to say, if you're looking for something oh. later on, then you might want to. I'm in the, I'm, I'm in the podcasting zone. That's oh. what I'm in. All right. Oofed. <laughs> Oofed. Welcome to the Conquistables. Tonight, the Conquistadors are in the Windy City to cheer on CM Punk at Money in the Bank 2001. Making their way to the ring tonight, the voice of the voiceless, Cameron Phillips. The Second City Saint, Ewan Taylor. The Cult of Personality, Phil Doyle. And Geordie Adam Milburn. Only tonight on... The Conquistables! I'm glad I'm coming through nice and clear. You are coming through very, very clear. It's like... Very oh, clear. It's like, I think you should be reading the shipping forecast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I thought we were wrestlers. Oh, be, oh, can you imagine that? Like, Drop in seven, moving into partial Ray Mysteria. <laughs> WrestleMania 37 Night 2, not so good. Bruce Hart, <laughs> temperamental. Oh, oh Von Erics, Misty with the, with the sign of Forest. Oof. <laughs> oof, oof. oof. Oh. So, night, night, night 2 was not as good as Night 1, getting back to Night 2 down. was garbage compared to Night 1. No, I mean, the main event was good. The main event was really good. The triple threat was really good. Yeah. Um, it, was just like, it was just like a, you know, a lonely walk down a rainy beach to get there. A little bit, yeah. You mean you mean through a rainy beach that was like red with shitty lights? I refuse to watch the women's t- uh, tag title match because I oh, ain't watching anything involving Nia Jax. The tag team turmoil match was bad enough, and that's before Billy Kay fell over. Oof. I don't understand I felt- why they split up the Iconics, who are a good tag team, and then put her in- them into like different tag teams. It makes this- they seemingly don't- seemingly had no plan of what to do with either of them separately. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with uh, what's the name um, Otis. Yeah, where's oh, he going yeah. up for no reason, and then whack him into a team with um? No, oh, he's, he's with Gable, Chad Gable. Who knows? Yeah. Hello, Al. Uh, hang on, hello. I'm having technical difficulties. Hang on. You sound all right. So is Cam just quiet, or is he can't hear us? No, I'm, I'm just not speaking. <laughs> oh, okay, that's, that's hard. You it's hard just to tell. <laughs> it's hard to wow. I can't see his face, can I? I just had nothing to say of value to this comment. <laughs> so I just... I just wait, shut wait. Up. If, if, the, if the qualifying factor to speak is having something of value to speak, so we just like... What the hell the podcast doing now? Here? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, well, you know, it's, 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 it's been a ride. We'll just get Shady back on and have him by himself and leave it at that. Come on. <laughs> well, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> at least he might come back. <laughs> I just... I, I, wanted that, I wanted that Nick on L match to be a subway drum fight, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nothing like racial stereotypes in 2021 go WWE no, yeah. including the kendo stick the uh, traditional oh. Nigerian weapon <laughs> yes <laughs> oh, Joe just so you know I have not seen night 2 that's uh, okay so, so no, no spoilers I'll watch it eventually I've seen night 1 but yes okay. was that was the Nigerian something match at Wrestlemania is that right Yes, it was night two. Drum fight, yeah, the Intercontinental match. I did read that, but yes, so I've got night two to watch. So, <laughs> oh, cool. okay, yeah, I'm sure that 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 was sponsored by Nick Griffin. That match, I'm sure, <laughs> probably. Yeah, oh, God, I, 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 no, I'm gonna leave that alone. Miss me one from it because as a concept, like, oh God, but yeah, night one that was a good, wasn't it? Night one was good. Yeah. Night one, night was, one was good. The, it had the right ending. It wasn't just get heat all night long, and I felt really, really sorry for Sasha Banks's right hand side after that whip. Oh, the noise of it! Oh my god! Oh! That was a proper, proper belt. I like. There's nothing like starting the show, getting all the hype going, and then announcing a rain delay. Never before <laughs> had the voice of Michael Cole ever been so accurate. <laughs> oh 
No, the worst thing was when like Samoa Joe popped up wearing like a rain poncho. Like, no, oh, that's no. right. That's Samoa brilliant. Joe can't be wearing one of those. Yeah, it's Samoa on, Joe. He laughs at the rain, surely. Poncho Joe, Joe. <laughs> yes. If anything, Bless he should have him. like his towel over his head. That's what he should have, shouldn't it? That's what he should do, actually. That's a good point. That was his gimmick for the longest time. Not be there in a poncho, Joe. Come on. Um, but it ruined his night nice suit. It did. Also, um, night one of NXT TakeOver was much better than night two because it didn't have a 40-minute overbooked fucking disaster match I refused to watch when I found it was 40 minutes. Oh, is that the Adam Cole? Dark, uh, Adam Cole, Cole Kelly. Kelly. No, that should never have been 40 minutes. What the hell are they doing? I did see that. What is it with NXT and just 40 minute long street yeah, it, fights? It's just because it's Adam Cole and th- their logic is if the match goes really, really long, it'll become an epic. No, it becomes boring. That's mm, called Triple H yeah. logic. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> he has it right in That's the head. Much it, yeah. But the same Triple H booked the first night, which I really, 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 really enjoyed and had a really, really good main event. Oh, that Walter match. Oh, yeah, that was, yeah. The, the death of uh, Mr. Champa. Oh, there was a bit where, like, I think. Um, Walt came off the ropes and did he do like a big boot to chomp his head? Yes, or was it the, yes, yeah. I was like, I was like, I was like, being watching, I was like, that man's had neck surgery. Can't be doing <laughs> that. Yeah, nope, he's had it again. He has a surgically repaired neck, and I was like, yeah, he's had it done, but like this, like, but rather than a scalpel, he's had it with like a large boot. <laughs> <laughs> Just forcibly put I'll, through his face. Mm-hmm. I'll sort your fusion plate <laughs> <laughs> out. Bang! Oh. As Tomato Champa's head goes into the orbit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And like it, the Walter's chest in the match just being like oh, completely covered in welts. Yeah, that probably didn't feel good. <sighs> it was just a wonderful like eighteen. I think it was like eighteen just minutes. Barren. It went just just violence. Yeah, I think I said to Ethan while we watched it. I was like, I like how Walter's gimmick is just like he's just a big lad from Austria. Like that's mm-hmm. like there's no kind of um, no. There's not like a kind of like you know. <laughs> well, there's, there's, oh, he's, a, he's an Austrian count. Yeah, right? yeah. no, he's not. Oh, it's well, Walter, no, he's come on a, though. <laughs> A very large man. No, because then that's going into Baron Corbin territory, and let's not do that again. <laughs> oh, I, just like, I love Walter, man. I love him. But now it's like Cat Walter. He can come down like Ray Raiden, you know, with like the hair kind of slipped back. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Jesus Christ! See? Cameron's got it. That laugh means that Cameron's understood me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm good. I know what you mean. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. The full-on kind of um, 1930s Dracula outfit down to the ring. This is like Walter in the 90s. This is what he'd be like. <laughs> he would be. He'd be like, my... he'd, be, he'd become crypt. <laughs> oh my God. Era. Very large. He, he would probably, in the 90s, I bet Walter would probably have like Alistair Black's entrance with like the... <laughs> <laughs> Just gets raised up like a, like a two, yeah, like two Ronnie sketch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my God. Oh, we're all over the place today. <laughs> Well, a bit, yeah. The two Ronnies do wrestling entrances. It'd be fantastic. So, cool bits. That would be just like Walter, I think. Like, not like today, Walter just come out with like the big jack on and stuff. Mm-hmm. But a really cool bit, I think, would have, oh, like Santino Morales. He'd do that walk to the ring. Oh, my God. With oh a bit God, of horse yeah, horse horse horse. I mentioned horse 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 in a minute, actually, when we actually talk about the, the thing we're supposed to be talking about now. Hmm. This is well, probably better. Oh, no. This is yeah. like we're massively back on track. Okay. Is that still here? Yeah, yeah. I'm just <laughs> listening, listening to the Austrian conversations. <laughs> the just Austrian checking. conversations coming to theatre soon. <laughs> I, I can't I wait to in the Austrian conversations. There you go. There's, there's the pay-per-view for you. <laughs> Main event of the Austrian conversations. I'll get a post it straight away. That sounds like a porno, no. actually. Let's not do that. <laughs> yeah, my name is Ida Water. <laughs> I'm here to find an Austrian Austrian conversation. And coffee came up my nose. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Tell me this was your pick, for God's sake. It was, yes. <laughs> um, you're going to ask why I picked this now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, that's well, traditionally that's what we do. Right, yeah. Well, purely, I, I picked this show purely, obviously, based on its main event. And when I watched it again, I was reminded that this was probably the first time. This is 2011, obviously. Yeah. So 10 years ago, and it felt like the first time in a long, long, long time that your main event not only has a repercussion as far as who is the title goes, but also has a consequence as to the overall state of the WWE or the WWF at the time as well. Yes. You're... You're referring to those crazy things we call stakes. Yeah, 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 exactly. It, it, it's 
remind I say when I did the pay per view project, you'll notice there was a lot of like um, main events in that. Well, obviously the Vince would be involved, and there would be like you know, oh, if, if Austin you know uh, wins tonight, you know whoever he's facing is going to get fired, and those kind of stuff. And this really hark back to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Only obviously like twelve years later. Yeah. Um, so obviously the setup is uh, CM Punk's um, contract um, was apparently legitimately expiring. Yep. Uh, he had obviously, you know, signed another one, you know, backstage before this, obviously. But the whole, the, the internet was a buzz that CM Punk was going to, you know, leave and go anyway, whatever. So they capitalized on that. I mean, the whole story that if CM Punk um, wins the title tonight, his contract expires at midnight and he's going to go off and leave the WWE with the WWE heavyweight title. But we'll get to that more at the when we get to that as much. <laughs> like, what is the actual name of the show? Money in the Bank 2011. Thank you. And now, WWE presents Money in the Bank. Sorry, I forgot that bit, didn't I? I forgot yeah. to actually give them a <laughs> How many episodes yeah. are we done? That's what we should start doing. We'll just, we start talking about a show, and it's up to the listeners yeah. to guess what show it is we're talking about. Guess guess what show it is. If you haven't listened to last month, then you won't know oh, what man, it is. We'll do exactly. that for a special show. That'd be actually quite good. Do like yeah. a live show. That'd be amazing. <laughs> it's just like going to go, on, it's the one where Lex Luger fucks everything up. That could be <laughs> anything. Well, that narrows it down to the last to like, a period of 20 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but there we go. Um, having actually forgotten the rest of the card for this, guys. Oh boy! Um, I did. I did get halfway through this, and I did feel inclined to apologise to all three of you. <laughs> you did apologise oh, after three matches. You basically just put in the Discord. I am sorry. I was, I was I was confused because obviously, like the, as you say, like the big story about the show, the thing that the show is known for, the thing that the show was at the time was kind of like all built around was the CM Punk versus John Cena food uh, feud. Um, <laughs> yeah. So food so color me confused when i kind of go to it on the wwe network and the like the thumbnail for this pay-per-view is big show wearing comedy victorian pajamas with hornswoggle reading a book in bed well they can't have cm punk's image because they don't own him anymore so that would be yeah, reason for that like, even he was like what well, of all the things to pick I don't know. I, I can't I, explain WWE logic. I'm not even going to begin Hornswoggle's to think about not that. even on the show. I think Big, no. obviously Big Show I was turns say, up. How is Hornswoggle even on this show? No. It's probably one they've just reused from another year. No clue what it's from. But they're like, they're like he's got like the kind of you know the kind of sleeping ha- dangly hat thing on, and some like kind of like like um, Scrooge pajamas, just reading, <laughs> uh, reading, reading this magic book like oh like it's a, some kind of fancy film. I was like what? Mm-hmm. Big Show did spend twenty years doing. Absolute random shit for this comedy. Yep, yeah, it's amazing he that he did. left. <laughs> yeah, although yeah. you've heard his commentary in AEW Dark at the minute, he's actually really good. <laughs> he's really, really good in Elevation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Elevation. That was it. Yeah, it's not Dark, yeah. is it? Oh, well, it's Elevation Dark. Dark Elevation or something. Uh, it's dark Elevation. It's dark Monday Night it. Elevation. Monday Night right. Dark which is, Elevator, which is more than I can say about Raw these days. <laughs> was that not the subtitle of Tekken Five? <laughs> Wow. wow. <laughs> what a deep cut that is. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, anyway, we begin Money in the Bank 2011. Money in the Bank 2011. Mm-hmm. I'll just repeat that again. Thank you. Um, uh, we begin with a dark match. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Al's got a dark match. <laughs> dark match, Al. It is. Well, we were talking about big Austrian men, but he's a big Russian man, uh, Vladimir Kozlov. Hey. Uh, he teams with Santino Morella. 
Oh, oh God! Oh God! Who's around this time? And they defeat the team of David Otonga and Michael McGillicuddy. Jesus, the Jobber <laughs> Express! Oh my God! Oh, David Otonga, he's still there, isn't he? Uh, I don't know actually. No, no, he's long gone. I don't think he's left. I'm gonna, I'm gonna check right now. Okay, really? I, I watched that the WWE film from like 2013. Um, he was on a pre-show cool? at one point, not too long ago. I remember seeing him, but that's the last I, time I saw him. And then he was doing like commentary and things like that because was he not like you know is he not like a qualified lawyer? Yes, I think that, so. was that was his sort of gimmick at one point. I yeah, he's actually ca- uh, properly got Lino you know, past the legal bar. No? He's probably like doing main event or something like that. Probably, yeah. The thing they kept around because he was married to like um, Jennifer Hudson for a while, but I think they're divorced now. Yeah. Non wrestling roles, 2015 to present. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Booker T remained raw color commentator while Tungi became a pre show panelist. He has occasionally appeared on commentary since. That's it. That'll be it then. Right. That's okay. it. Crikey. So I think, so like, they can bin off. You know, the good brothers and all the people they kind of sacked off in the year, but they keep David Otunga and Bo Dallas. Jesus. Bloody hell. I don't know. know. Who, can, who, can, who can explain it? I don't think anyone can. No one can. It's impossible. <laughs> um, so we have uh, the CM Punk promo uh, package included this, which includes the rather wonderful line. Yep. Maybe this comedy will be better when Vince McMahon is I, dead. I wrote that down as well, and my comment after that, that was... Opening line. <laughs> Can't say I disagree, <laughs> Punk. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, we, haven't, we haven't had a shouty Vince intro since the Attitude Era. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's um, pretty true. It's not, him, it's not really him doing the voiceover, but it is him doing... It's not really kind of like, Vince as well, because this is where he's kind of like his face is kind of like drooping and like the hair's kind of gone to a coma rather than like kind of bouffant Vince look. It's kind of like, you know, he's kind of evolved into like the aged form of Vince McMahon, not the kind of Vince in his prime, if that makes sense. Right. Uh, Sidetrack. WrestleMania night one, when Vince McMahon's introducing us to the show, has he had work done or is it just me? He, he, he looked, I, I must admit, he did look as though it, didn't it? Yeah. He looked better than he did against in the Undertaker thing. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's true. He looked like a thousand years old in that. <laughs> that's probably why he looks better he, now. He looks ill. It's a virus series, yeah. But he's like, what, nearly 18 now, is he? Oh, I guess... I want to, I want to say 73. Yeah. Don't know. But yeah, you can see, like, his quite... hair's gone to a comb over rather than the kind of, like, the yeah. proper big, big Vince hair. Yeah. Um, I also wrote down during this uh, video, remember the Nexus? <laughs> yeah, yeah we'll get to uh, the next in the core and things like that Punk's got um, a Nexus t-shirt hasn't he at one point he has yeah, yeah. He's, he's introduced at the start of his match as from the Nexus CM yeah. Punk anyway once again we'll get to that bit we've got Cole uh, Michael Cole Booker T and Jerry Lawler uh, on commentary I've just put here Cole Booker T Lawler fucking hell I just wrote down Michael <laughs> Cole uh, fuck My yeah God. well they, Michael Cole was especially a bit you know what a match is the SmackDown Money in the Bank ladder match, I, which features... Hold on, I have two things before we get going. Okay. Number one, WWE HD, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. also, the opening graphic stated that we were live and direct from Chicago, Illinois. That's actually a lie. We were from Rosemount, Illinois, but Vince doesn't like to admit that he's not in big, big cities, so he put Chicago down. <laughs> the All-State Arena is actually in Rosemont, not in Chicago. It's not what you say, it's how you say it, isn't it? It's all exactly. the uh, typical Vince. Yep. I just think it'll be the case of Illinois will do, damn it. <laughs> I own uh, Illinois. No one else Illinois. cares, pal. Just put Chicago, it's fine. <laughs> I didn't. Vince McMahon didn't screw Illinois. Illinois screwed Illinois. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> so, anyway. so anyway, your lineup for the SmackDown Money in the Bank ladder match is Sin Cara, remember him. Uh, um, <laughs> Wade Barrett. Yay! Justin Gabriel, now PJ Black, obviously. Mm-hmm. Big Sheamus, Cody Rhodes, whatever the fuck happened to him. Mm-hmm. Heath Slater. Now known yeah. as Heath. Now known as Heath in Impact Wrestling. Daniel Bryan, no idea. And <laughs> Kane, maybe, I don't know, he'll be, he'll be Hall of Fame material one day. Yeah. Who knows? So my first thoughts about this is, surely eight is too many. <laughs> yes. Eight is too many, then you add Sin Cara to the mix, and now it's way too many. This is like really early Sin Cara, isn't it? Before we kind of yeah. really kind of earned his um, uh, botch strikes. <laughs> this is the original Sin Cara that's in this tonight, though, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, it's the, it's yeah, the botchy it's, guy. This is, uh, this is mystical. Yeah, because the, uh, it, because eventually he buggers off and they end up getting, like, there's like 18 months with the Sin Cara characters played by someone else completely, mm-hmm. wasn't it? Honeco, isn't it? 
Yeah, they got Sunil Kohli. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that yeah, what yeah, he's in like the Lucha Bros with? Um, oh, the other Luchador fella whose name Kalisto. Kalisto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the, the the shocking bit of commentary on this at the start as well is when it says this is Kane's fifth Money in the Bank match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's everybody um, else's first. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I just like you, you look at Kane and you don't imagine, yeah, ladder specialist. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he's just a bit of meat there, just so he can put people through things, as we find out. But he's the defending champion. There you go. That's right. No, well, yeah, I, I keep forgetting that he won it in 2010 as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. he did. I just that totally bypassed me as well. Yeah, but I remember from the beginning, like we we you know Sin Cara obviously has a reputation now, but when he kind of came to the ring, he was he was getting a decent pop. The crowd seemed to to like well, him. I think it was split because there was a very prominent sign in the camera shot that just says seen enough Cara. That made me laugh. <laughs> I didn't see that. Well, <laughs> it's very prominent. We'll come back to this because this one cracking signs. They, through they this. try their best to cut away a number of times and they still get it in every single shot. It's brilliant. Brilliant. I mean, everyone, this is, it's going to be the same problem with the, the raw ladder match later on mm. tonight. Everyone in this match makes a hell of an effort and I'm not yeah. sort of like having a dig at anyone's like, you know, participation in this and anything like that. But the problem with having like eight people is it just ends up being a mess. Yeah. Well, they mention, yeah. on, mention on commentary. So they say like there's an interview on WWE Online from the recently retired Edge. Irony of ironies. And he's talking about like eight eight people make it, you know, a whole different thing than the six that it was previously or something along those lines. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, six is just about manageable. Four would be ideal. But... I don't, but we're coming off like the 2011 seemed to be like the year in the WWE where they just basically thought more numbers will be good. Yes. <laughs> more, more numbers equals better. Yeah. We've just come off obviously the, the one and only 40 man Royal Rumble. Uh, well, proper one. Obviously, we had the greatest Royal Rumble ever. It was 50, but that was in the parallel universe that is Saudi Arabia. <laughs> so, ergo, that doesn't count. Before the attempted kidnapping. Yes. Before the attempted kidnapping. And the, I know you will not have your wrestlers back, Mr. McMahon. Mm-hmm. They belong to me now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's decent enough, this match. It's okay as an opener, but I don't, I didn't remember anything about it. I huh. totally forgot that Daniel Bryan won this. You no, know, I, I kind of I remember because when he came out, you know, it marched with our crease, I was very happy and then Michael Cole just started throwing his geek oh. stuff and I, I, I literally wrote down oh. in all caps, shut the fuck up Cole with the geek bullshit, you cunt. Well, I guess even nerds are allowed in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Oh, I guess oh. they had to make an exception for this guy. Remember when he slapped the taste out of your mouth cold and then <laughs> didn't you think that was Superman slapping you? What's Daniel Bryan? What, uh, what's he, the star of Revenge of the Nerds? Oh, Okay, trying to get... Hey, look at Daniel Bryan again. A very feisty Bryan, like a gnat, getting involved in every part of this matchup. Is this yeah. heel era Michael Cole as well? Yes, he's like, this, is, yeah, this is pre-Cole mine, Michael Cole, so it's getting to that horrible stage where I just wanted to kill him. It's just like, why are you doing this? Like, just keep going about nerds. Because he thinks that's cool. And he, I think he calls jerry lawler and nerd at some point and like no one else yeah. is kind of going with it and just kind of looking at him it's just like oh it's like you know he, he doesn't even have a tv oh, he's god. vegan what does he eat it's like god. Oh, god. i also enjoy colin booker attempting to you know interact and be cultural with the spanish announce desk by just being outlandishly racist that's not really lawler's uh wheelhouse isn't it well yeah Pretty you much, know the yeah. whole que paso stuff it's like come on guys no well you can see they, they kind of clearly think eight hey, people is too many because they very early early on get rid of Sin Cara. yes <laughs> was he not like legit injured in this yeah, he was hurt going through the ladder I think because <laughs> he went through the because Shamo batters him through the ladder It's exactly the right word. Absolutely waffles him through the ladder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he kind of he kind of sells like he's being electrocuted. <laughs> I think <laughs> it was the, 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 the whole med- I, re- I actually remember this was legit. I think, and he was genuinely just completely out. I don't think the spot through the ladder hurt him. I think it's the way he landed was what hurt him. Well, I seem to get these stories confused because I looked at the. I I seem to remember. Sin Cara bringing a, a demanding a whole medical crew come down when he got injured mm. because he and, and everyone they packaged him up to the gurney and he said he was in pain and all this kind of stuff and then when he got to the gorilla position apparently he said oh I broke my finger <laughs> and he, everyone was really like pissed off with him that he'd get like demanded all this medical attention like legit x signs and everything because he broke his finger 
And when you slow this down, this moment with Shimo is he traps his hand underneath the ladder as it falls. And I thought, oh, this is the one where he breaks his finger. And apparently not. The finger break is later this year when Alberto Del Rio gets really pissed off with him complaining during the match about him breaking yeah, his finger. he just levers him. He just starts kicking him during the match because he asks the referee to stop the match because he's dislocated his finger. And um, <laughs> yes, Del Rio is so mad. Yeah, Del Rio, who's obviously a bastion of virtue. and, and, and <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a bast something, but bastion is not it. No, I don't think Bastion's not it, no, yeah. <laughs> well, I just so checked the um, Sinkar Wikipedia page, and it says oh he was taken God. out of the match with a storyline injury. The following oh, day, he, oh, was then, he was then suspended for 30 days for his first violation of the wellness program. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> it then. Maybe they've advertised him for this match, so he's they've kind of, sort of said, you're going to get like yeah. five minutes top and then out. And then you're um, out, sort of thing. But he does get absolutely just planted through that ladder. He does he get does. destroyed. I, 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 part of me was like, did Seamus legit not like him or something? <laughs> I think he just wants to make sure he went, he went through the ladder, and my God, he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he, he definitely does. He, he definitely works. gets through a ladder. But um, yeah, Daniel Bryan wins by uh, throwing um, Wade Barrett in the end mm-hmm. off, a, yeah. off the ladder. Wade Barrett was so wasted as a wrestler. Yeah, I'm it's totally. just like, I'm as totally. like you kind of look again, like you kind of archetypal WWE superstar. It's like he's got the yeah. height, he's got the build. He's got he everything talk. to work. Yeah. It's just, I, t- I think he suffered more from the John Cena tearing down the entire Nexus at SummerSlam yes. than anyone else did. I was so... Oh, God, now you're reminding me of that whole thing because I was so upset because I was really into the Nexus. I really enjoyed what they were doing and then all of a sudden it was like, here comes the galaxy now and I'm just like, oh, fucking hell, what else is on? Yeah. He's running r- 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 rush over everything, wasn't he? Yeah. Is it not SummerSlam this year? So it's like a few, couple of months away from this that they have the 7-on-7 seven seven match. Was that 2011? Oh, yeah, before. Was it the year before? 2010? Yeah, 2010. Well, even so, it's like... So they've, they've been and gone then and he's... I can quite easily see why Wade Barrett got completely fed up and just yeah. let his contract expire. Especially like he kind of has the Nexus, which is really good, and then kind of lands on the Bad News Barrett, which is like, but both times, like, it just like completely just mishandled and just flops for no for no reason. Yeah, I just like, he mm-hmm. was he was trying a little bit and he also got the stupid King gimmick, didn't he? Yes, he did. See, I enjoyed that when Stardust made him the Cosmic <sighs> King, Barrett. You know, I was like, I'm into this <laughs> yeah, now. Into that, I'm, yeah. I'm into this, let's go. Let's just go crazy with it, and they just kind of again, all things just kind of just get out. Because um, you keep forgetting that match. That, what, what SummerSlam was it where they had the Stephen Amell and fourteen or fifteen? Start might be forty fifty. And you think about the participants in that match, and everyone's like gone on to do different stuff now. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Amell obviously wasn't a full time wrestler in the no. first place. No, Pax in AEW. But see, when you look at this, look at the lineup here. There's only really like Wade's on commentary now. Mm-hmm. Um, Kane's Hall of Fame slash Mayor. Um, yeah. Seamus is still there, but I mean, he's like, there's a lot of like talk about neck injuries and all sorts of things, spinal, spinal stenosis or whatever. Mm. And yep. Daniel Bryan, and that's it. Everyone else is kind of either, you know, pretty much gone, haven't they? Yep. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So WWE goes anyway. Yeah. Um, Did you catch the, uh, the yeah. bit in the, I think, halfway through where Jerry Lawler just completely um, dunks on uh, Michael Cole? Yes. <laughs> I, I actually, I stood up and applauded. Oh, oh man. Go deep breath. Yeah, you know what you call that? What? Splat. That's all you had? Yeah. There's a brilliant Lawler moment later on was Cole during the main event. <laughs> it's just... Because yeah, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a roller coaster this show with um, with Lawler. Because, like, in some spots he's really good, then in other parts so he's like, no, 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 Jerry, please no. Which is coming up quite soon yeah. after this match, to be fair. Um, yeah, I was going to say, we've got a uh, video footage after this of Vince uh, coming, arriving at the arena with Johnny Ace and a lawyer. Oh, God. Um, whatever development wrestler that poor guy is. <laughs> um, and then you've got um, the absolute bastion of women's wrestling, the upstanding <laughs> totem pole of, uh, oh. of Ellie Kelly versus Brie Bella. I nearly said Kevin Kelly versus wow, Brie Bella. I'd be more interested in this match. <laughs> That'd have been so much, wouldn't it? Yeah. But yeah, but here's um, here's Kelly Kelly, so good they named her twice, against mm. Brie Bella. And I maintain, I had to effectively force myself to watch this as it was on the verge of contravening my never watch a Bella's match. Oh, <laughs> 
last year. Um, I forgot this was only. I forgot that Kelly Kelly was once Divas champion. Mm-hmm. And uh, this match is an absolute grind and is terrible. I've just put here oh. um, lots of shrieking. Mm-hmm. Kelly Kelly face plants to the outside. Yep. This is light years away from Sasha versus <laughs> Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, finish out of nowhere, uh-huh. but thank Christ. I wrote less than that. The first time that like, you see, I think it's like Kelly, Kelly hit the ropes, and she just oh, kind of like walks up to the ropes, turns around, leans against <laughs> it, and then kind of bounces off. It's like, uh, oh no, it's just kind of, oh no. It's and then, embarrassing. Uh, the, the first two things I've written for my notes in this match are, please, someone stop the king, please. <laughs> and then, seriously, make make Jerry King, make, make the king stop. Oh, these two girls are so naughty. They deserve a good spank. They're naughty, all right. Look at them. I want them to look over here at me. Just wink, girls. I'll do the rest. Oh, yeah, the way that you treat, the way you treated him at ringside last week on Raw, you expect them to look at you? Trust me, they're not going to look over here because Cole is here. I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, when this new company's took over the network, are we just going to get the Attitude Era pay-per-views just set in silence? <laughs> they're not even going to exist. That whole is not going to exist, Al, when Peacock can get done with it. Because, <laughs> I mean... You know, all this women's revolution and all the mm. rest of it. It's like, you've got this horny old man on commentary <laughs> just yep. constantly. Every other word is yeah, just so bad. Apparently, you cannot watch on the Peacock version of the Re Network right now, you cannot watch the segment on Raw where Val Venus gets his PP cut off. Yeah, what? you can't watch that. You can't watch... Wait, uh, you, can, you, you can't watch that bit, but you can watch the Brawl for All. <laughs> yeah. How does that make any sense? Well, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's probably in the same category as you can't watch the infamous moment where Roddy Piper decided to go half blackface. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's... <laughs> that's gone. That's yeah. not ideal. I mean, we'll give it that. Yeah. I mean, it's still in like, the UK version, the European version. Of it, yeah? that's all <laughs> oh, yeah, it's it's just in, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just waiting for the day that they sell out over here It'll never to like, Netflix, Amazon Prime It'll or something. It'll like. never, ever happen. Maybe BT no. Sport? I don't, I don't think... Well, no, because the contract switches around every so often, so if anything... I don't think I'll move because it's going to be. They've seen how much of pain the asset is with Peacock. Why would they want to do that again? Unless the money is really lots good. Lots of money. I, yeah, but is it worth all the money to have piss people off? But then again, it's WWE in 2021. But you know, Vince isn't doing yeah. the work, is he? He just gets the money. He doesn't well, care about all the actual. You know, they just need to supply the programming, and then someone else deals with it. The, yeah, because yeah. what I've always thought about the when you the, the WWE Network is probably the most expensive per month of all my streaming services. Same. But it's also probably the one on the shonkiest software. Yes, it's, it's shit. Because the, t- the amount of times that it doesn't pick up where I left off. Oh my yeah. God, I hate that. Oh. Where it's like, you know... Or, or, or remember what you were watching. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Well, even just like, like skipping it, forward yeah. to like a certain part of the pay-per-view. Yep, mm-hmm. yep. Doesn't Netflix, work. Disney Plus, uh, Prime what Video. else have I got? Yeah, whatever, uh, Amazon Prime, whatever absolutely bang on remembers everything i can go on my phone and watch it well, uh, you know when i'm out about come back home resume from the same place on my telly to be honest Great. with that Amazon prime is probably jeff bezos staring at me from a corner of my room i don't know about <laughs> probably yeah yeah but you know if they put good choice now i'll accept that you know what i mean there you go <laughs> it's one of the compromises you have to make in the modern society i think, so, think like the only, the only one i've got on my club watch on my um apple tv the only one that's worse is the now tv app because you could, like oh. that doesn't even recognise, you know, like on normal things, you can kind of pause it and scrub through the timeline to kind of get to somewhere else in the show. Yeah, like you can't do that on the now TV app. You have to manually fast forward it, like it's nineteen eighty seven or something. Ugh. And then guess to get at the right spot. But yeah, that's, that's so garbage. that's our that's um, app review corner done. Yep. Um, my notes for this match were as follows. Uh, WWEDivas.com bar for four minutes of my life I will never get back. <laughs> Although there was, I think I mentioned this on the um, in the Discord uh, to you, and like at one point I was kind of like distracted by a big sign behind the ring that said, uh, uh, "Save tag team wrestling, hire Max and Jeremy Buck." <laughs> yes, <laughs> and I just I said, like, "Wow!" I just said, "Thank God they didn't do that." <laughs> Imagine that world though. Vince sees that and goes, "Hey, who are these Buck fellas? Get them on board!" Oh Jesus. Imagine the kind of oh. weird alternate reality world of no. wrestling we'll be in right now. Generation, Generation Me was painful enough with how badly they were utilized. Let's not think about what Vince would <laughs> do with them. Probably still better than this match, though. God, anyway. Um, well, yeah. We get a best of Monday Nitro advert. Yay. And DVDs. Then we get the DVDs. Imagine that. 
I know. DVD. I know. What them disc things. <laughs> um, then we get the wonderment of Mark Henry versus the Big Show. And this is the bit where I felt the need to really, really apologize to you all. Because <laughs> uh, I had no idea this match was on this card. I didn't, we, I didn't mind this too much, though, because it's just uh, like, it's just a big, big, beefy boys battering each other. Yeah, it's but beefy. Just beefy and coordinated boys beating be up each other. <laughs> It's like Mark Henry took 10 years to be vaguely competent. Correct. <laughs> and it's still not and, that good. And he was... He, well, I feel really, really sorry for Mark Henry because his best years were probably when he pretended to retire. Yes. Oh, that promo. Oh, good that Lord. That promo is mm. still absolute gold. Yeah, that salmon jacket Playing, and like, everything. Yeah, he's the strongest slam Cena and goes, you know, i got one more in me. That was great. Yeah. Um, I think this is after that, isn't it? Yes. Cool. Is it before yeah, yeah, so yeah, the, the, this is before is the it? retirement speech. Oh, okay. I didn't remember when the retirement speech was. Like 13 um, or 12 or 13, I think it was, when he did the retirement thing. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, this is just a big hospital, but not a great one. No. It's just literally just lumbering it's, around the place. It's interesting how we've gone from two stick insects beating each other to two tubs of lard beating <laughs> each other. Well, the, 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 the beefiest of beefs beefing into each other is what I wrote down about it. It's not very good. Yeah, I think that you can sum up as the beefiest of beefs beefing. Although, like, uh, like I think I was more critiquing the kind of um, the the clothing choices because surely at this point, Big Show's like <laughs> his pants go down low enough and his like his knee supports go up high enough. Why not? You, why aren't you just not wearing trousers? There's like an inch of thigh where like all the support braces are to kind of keep him upright oh, at this point. So you can, you just put trousers to, on. You gotta let you gotta have something for people to look for. <laughs> just put you some know, trousers on. A little, little bit of thigh, you know, somebody's gonna enjoy it. <laughs> and then oh, there was okay. um. Uh, the bit where Big Show gets off, off the second rope and the ring sounds like it was actually screaming. Oh, man. <laughs> oh The Big Show oh, may re the knee. Landing, bad landing, bad landing. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> the soul of the ring left. <laughs> the ring was like, no! The soul of the ring. <laughs> it didn't like it. The ring probably knew what was going to happen to it later. That was a highlight. That was about... That's about it. I mean, it's got, you know, yeah. and there's like a bit of work afterwards where he smashes up his ankle and all that kind of stuff. That's a bit nasty. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's a bit of an ankle here with the steel chair oh. and the, you know, breaking Big Show's ankle and then having to like haul him out in a little golf cart thing. <laughs> yeah, <I> forgot, <laughs> yeah, didn't worry about that. That per- um, the of the golf cart left as well. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, oh God, but, uh, do I have no, to? This is not a match which will go down in history as anything decent. It was <laughs> pretty <laughs> bad. So this this pay per view started with a sort of fren- frenetic money in the bank and has rapidly gone downhill from there. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, Cameron's sweating, going, "What have I done?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like "Have I been I'm completely blinded by this main event?" Maybe I have. <laughs> anyway, um, Vince is with John Laurinaitis, and he's asked in an interview backstage promo, "Did you resign CM Punk?" And then you get the wonderful, wonderful Vince line of, "He told me." Vince McMahon to get out. <laughs> yeah, I was like, he's like, oh, this like, the, yes. the, it's like the biggest ingrate I ever had to negotiate with. I'm like, I wonder how much this is like just Vince just, just shooting on him. I wonder how much of this like is actually the negotiation process that was going on. <laughs> well, it was probably a sign of things to come three years later. You know what I mean? They weren't really <laughs> That's a fair um, point. That is yeah. a fair point. Anyway, because WWE often like to theme pay-per-views, and I forget how long they've been theming pay-per-views for, mm. here we are again for the second of tonight's Money in the Bank ladder matches. Yay! Yay. So you have, again, eight is too many, uh, <laughs> Alberto Del Rio, <laughs> Kofi Kingston, Yay! To him. Jack, Jack Swagger. Yay! Uh, Evan Bourne. Uh, Yay! Our truth uh, uh, Yeah. Uh, Alex Riley. Uh, and I was like, oh my God, Alex Riley. <laughs> Jeez, oh. Yeah. Totally forgot he was even, even did, existed. Did Alex oh. Riley go back to NXT to commentate and then have that match with Kevin Owens? And then left? Uh, probably. Probably, I think so. I think that's early doors in my kind of like get, really getting into NXT. He was on commentary. I'm sure he was. I'm going to have to take this. I should have probably checked before. Well, NXT started about 2012, 2013, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because the network started in 2014, and the, the takeover shows were like the test run for the network, wasn't it? Yeah. Before they, before they moved, yeah, but they did at least one before the one of the big preview pre- pre- started, didn't they? I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the first takeover was before WrestleMania 30, wasn't it? Yeah, that sounds right. So yeah, that and that was what it was. Takeover Arrival was just like the setup in the performance center. Yeah. 
and it was just to test the ground for when they were doing the full scale WrestleMania 30 the next night. So, yeah, who else we got? Uh, the Miz, who oh. is currently seemingly feuding with Alex Riley, and Rey Mysterio. Uh. <laughs> That's your feel yeah. for this one, God. for Raw. I just put down here, everyone hates Del Rio because that's the start of this match. They all just basically pile on Del Rio with ladders. Yeah, because like, like, when they come down, I think, is it... Um, who, I think Del Rio takes a ladder down with him first of all, and then everybody else just takes a ladder down as well. Everyone picks a ladder. Yeah. yeah. But uh, there's, there's uh, two things. Like, I think uh, our truth because he's going to how he takes a small ladder. Yes. And then, and then Ray completely ruins it by not taking the biggest ladder he can possibly grab. Yeah. Because that would have been hysterical. If he kind of came to yes. the ring with that massive ladder and he's being so small, but no, he gets like a normal sized ladder. It's like, oh no, Ray, get! I was like, when he's walking down there, like, Ray, take the big one. Ray, take the big one. Get the big ladder, Ray, because it'll be funny. And he just walks straight past it. No comedy in that man. Yeah, no comedy. No, no, there's no comedic timing. But the more kind of stood there with ladders and just kind of just they just look at Del Rio just battering more with ladders. That, I mean, it, it, it's a novel beginning. You don't normally see that in a ladder it match. Is really, and he gets buried under these ladders on the outside. Yeah. Uh, you get the comedy moment of Miz and Riley fighting over the smallest ladder in the match. Yeah. <laughs> it would be useless to anyone. Um, Miz then slams his knee, uh, falling off a ladder. And that looks nasty. Like, it did look quite nasty. It does not look nice at all. No, I, it seemed like both of them were prepared for Del Rio to push a ladder over. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, just think, a little bit. Because like. obviously, I think, I think the Miz's one is obviously planned because they kind of he kind of gets vacated from the ring at this point again, reducing mm. the numbers. But um, is it Riley on the other side, or is it um, uh, Evan Bourne? Whoever it is, like on the other side, just like they they just flat themselves onto the ring because they was clearly not ready for it. No, not at all. Um, Evan Bourne does get an impressive looking shoot and start off a ladder in the outside yeah. in the aisle. With a lot of people waiting to catch him. That, it was a lot, yeah, but it did look quite cool. It, it looked, looked cool. cool. The problem was these spots. That's that's. I think that really hurts these sort of matches. Is it's just so set up. Yeah. Nothing yeah. flows naturally at all. It's eight Building structures it's like, sure. you know, why are you putting that ladder inside that ladder or bounce it on that <laughs> mm-hmm. table? It's obviously going to come into play at one point during the match, yeah. isn't yeah. it? You know, and if the usual rules apply that if you set it up, then you're the one going through it. Yeah. I think it's just the fact they have like they have like is it like four kind of jumps to the outside spots in a row, and it's like each time you can see people waiting to catch the person coming out from the ring. It's like well, uh, it just kind of I think because yeah. there's so many in a row, and it's just like ah, you, you need to be spaced out a little bit so people, you don't kind of see people waiting so much. Because the assumption is that you can only, as an audience, concentrate on like two or three people in the ring at once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So therefore, if like two or three people are in the ring, the other sort of five or six are just outside selling, lying around, just <laughs> lying around. And it's like I can appreciate that it's not the easiest match to participate in because it will, you know, hurt for all the hyperbole about you know oh, it's career ending and I was going, which yeah, you, you're going to fall off a ladder. There's sometimes no way of pushing your fall on that one, and you do yeah. run the risk of an injury. But it just feels like. You're just outside taking breathers for most yeah. of this. It's kind of, sort of makes cycling people in, which is, you know, you, you can do it easier when there's six people. Like, you know, the TLC match, Rush Mania 17 yeah. is a great example of that, of them just kind of constantly cycling people in and out of the ring. So there's kind of, uh, you kind of don't get that kind of large gaps between people just lying there. But because there's eight, well, you know, technically seven for most of it, at some point someone's got to be lying out of the ring for like a good kind of five minutes or so. I think Del yeah, Rio exactly. does that at some point. He's like, just suddenly really pops up after about five minutes. Like, oh yeah, Del Rio's in this, isn't he? I forgot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's just like, suddenly reappears again, doesn't he? Yeah. Uh, can we point out the wonderful moment where Booker T on commentary has a pop at Kofi Kingston for <laughs> dancing during the match? Yeah, so that, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's Booker T uh-huh. <laughs> having a pop at Kofi Kingston for dancing during a match. Inventor of the Spinner Rooney. Uh, yes, the inventor of the fucking Spinner Rooney. <laughs> um, but anyway, yes. Uh, I've put it down here everyone's up top for what feels like three days mm-hmm. um, and then Miz is back he limps up to the ladder Remus Hugh gets booed that was yeah, the first one yeah. and then we get um, Ray and Del Rio at the top of the ladder uh, Del Rio does the obvious heel tactic thing on Ray Mysterio pulling his mask off yeah. you know, which forces um, Ray to cower. And then it all goes wrong. Yes. It? So it does that, is just, wrong. that is really slowly fall over. It's not even like a good proper like, nasty, like quick fall. It's like the ladders are like, uh, uh, we're going, we're going. <laughs> till in, till in. Oh, and then that's it. oh, we're gone. And he has to put the ladder back up again, doesn't he? And they, yeah, he has to put the ladder back up and then quickly climb it and then grab it. 
Yeah. Uh, and then we get Michael Cole going, Del Rio is the future. <laughs> uh, well, I think obviously they, he, they, they thought he was because he'd won the Royal Rumble. They put the belt on him. Not long after this, don't they? He kind of wins it off, off uh, spoilers, wins it off Punk at Survivor, is it Survivor Series? Or he catches in at something that, afterwards, isn't he? So I think... Uh, yeah, yeah. And they, they put a few belts on him before, like, his, uh, you know, his future issues, sh- uh, shall we say. <laughs> yep. Um, so I think they had, there must have been plans to kind of give him a push. I think, you know, we, we got Ray this match, but clearly Ray at this point is, like, on his way out. Like, not necessarily on his way out, but, like, they kind of need, like, another kind of big Latino star to fill his gap. Yeah, but obviously they kind of think. Well, obviously we've got Sin Cara. We'll try with him, but we've got Del Rio as well. We'll try with him, and none of them really work at all, do they? Actually, thinking about it, no, Which, no, uh, not. No. And also, what I, I kind of realized when Del Rio was celebrating, you kind of realize why people shouldn't necessarily celebrate at the top of the ladder after they win, <laughs> because behind them, <laughs> you just see everybody going out for snacks. Yeah, have you seen um, the on this subject? Have you seen the Stone Cold sessions with Chris Jericho yet? Oh, yeah, of course. I've watched most of it. Yeah. He he comments on this very very thing when they go through the No Mercy 2008 ladder match with Shawn Michaels. All right, because Jericho's Jericho falls off the ladder when he grabs the belt, and he says that's what you should do at the end of a ladder match: yeah. always fall off the ladder because you've just been in a brutal fight, and then like you're like you can lie in the middle of the ring and the camera's low. Yeah. So Jericho very much aware of this problem. <laughs> Well, I think the only time you can get away with it is, is it WrestleMania 16 with Edge and Christie win, but there's like a, a table on top of the two ladders. Yeah, and they just precariously balance on it. So they, they, so they can just like sit down on top of the table, top of the ladders. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll accept that. That's fine. Yeah. Also, yeah. Um, another good sign, uh, Alberto Del Rio mows my grass. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. I saw that one. Yeah. This crowd were amazing all night. The summer of the this, signs this were just crack incredible. Time. Uh, there's an even better one later we'll come to it in the main event there's an even better yeah. one than that but yeah there's some good sign work in this match but yeah Dario wins to the sound of people uh, leaving the arena to get their snacks in the toilet break pretty much yeah then we have um, the uh, title match between Christian and Randy Orton and Randy Orton is champion but Christian has um, got it written in the contract by Teddy Long that if Randy Orton gets disqualified then he can lose the title and Christian gains it. Not just if he's disqualified, uh, if there is, quote, poor officiating, he'll lose the title. <laughs> yes. Um, quite how you judge that, we don't know. Oh. And who is the, um, who's refereeing the referees? <laughs> no. They've essentially given Christian Edge's gimmick. Yep, basically. Uh, which I hate when they do that. It's the same kind of thing as why they gave... Rey Mysterio, the title in 2006, is because they couldn't give it to Eddie Guerrero because he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This is, this is, sorry, Cameron, no, I disagree. This is WWE who once advertised and went through with a match with Vince McMahon versus God. They could have given the match to, sorry, the title to Eddie Guerrero posthumous. <laughs> like, that's true. No, well, they, they, I told Claire about that Vince McMahon versus God thing the other night. <laughs> and she didn't believe <laughs> He's telling so the truth. Try that. <laughs> We're going to have a lovely romantic evening oh, watching the Vincent Man wrestle with God. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't, yeah. It, wasn't that the one where God, Shawn Michaels, tagged the impression? Yes. <laughs> that last shot. Yeah, people like, you know, they, they have that, but people complain about, you know, Kenny Omega wrestling a, a six-year-old girl or that doll in Japan. That's like people, not being real wrestling. Argue, people that say, oh, it's really, really stupid, it's just, fuck off. Just fuck <laughs> off. That's all I'm going to say. Is that nine-year-old last night going now? Yes. Who is she? I don't remember. <laughs> Because I had it in my head that it was some, you know, she's obviously got older and is now like a full-time wrestler herself. But yeah, who's the one who keeps popping up? Is it about, oh, I can't think of a name. Is it Marikito? The one who keeps popping up on Twitter who's in... Oh, Marikito. Mark yeah. I love her. Yeah. I love her. Who is amazing. She's got, she's got an excellent Twitter game. It's brilliant. She's got a brilliant Twitter game. When she was announced for the AEW uh, Eliminator Tournament, she was like, hello, motherfucker. That's she wrote. I, I'm laughing. I'm like, I love you. You must win. <laughs> she's just uh, brilliant. I just like the fact that I watched this sort of documentary on YouTube about um, her wrestling career so far. And it was just like, I can't even remember she was involved in a feud with someone, like one of her former tag partners in Japan. And they just like, she ended up with this like submission move that she ended up like clamping this lassie in. And all she we could chant throughout the whole thing is, we're just like, ah, the cutest! <laughs> and it was just like such a weird thing. To, you know, inflicting pain. I'm the cutest! 
<laughs> because she's like a former Seriously. like idol singer and the whole story behind that yeah yeah, yeah. She, got, she got dropped by a record label for real <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know this and we're just drawing up with the wrestling pretty much she's quite literally the fallen idol yeah that's what she's called nice. uh, Maki because she tried to have a singing career and her record label dropped her because they said she wasn't like good looking enough I think um, yeah you know she wasn't she wasn't beautiful enough to be an idol. Or I think false. I saw a bit on um, a bit in the, the DW Women's Tournament, and then the bit on uh, being the elite when she told the Dark Order their dancing was fucking shit and walked off. Yes, <laughs> I was like, I come back, yeah. come back. That. Um, there's also a fantastic spot at the. Oh, this was the dark match before um, AEW failed Barbara Explosion fun, um, <laughs> where it's a six women tag match. Everyone else has come out. Maki Ito comes out and. The, the rest of the ring chaos is happening. Makito's still going through her, her entrance and her song because God damn it, she's going to get the song in. <laughs> of course. Yep. I respect I that. that. Mm-hmm. I think it was more like JR's complete bemusement. Oh, I, really so I did not know what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Christian and Orton. Yes. Um, I've got down here, Orton is the face? Question oh, mark. Some mistakes. Yeah, I was a bit yeah, confused. confused. Yep, yep. Um, so straight away, Christian goes to the chair. Um... Christian misses a plancher to the outside and ends up splatting on the outside. Yeah. Spain, Germany, and the US servicemen and women are all mentioned, <laughs> but, not, but not the UK, because we can go and fuck off. We don't care for this. <laughs> no hello to Channel 4 for us this night, is there? There's a moment where Christian tries to fly an elbow from the top rope, and then Randy Orton drop kicks him in midair, which looks really cool. Yeah, yeah both of them, like, they got good chemistry. I think. What's Christian's finisher call to everyone? Uh, to meet the unprettier kill switch yeah, I said the kill switch as well because it was on his uh, t-shirt wasn't it yeah I mean it's but here is the kill switch I have no memory of it being called the kill switch same I I don't know what's the unprettier I only kind of remember it because he was talking I think he talked about it during um, when they had Randy Orton on the podcast with him and Edge because he was nah. talking talk about like the chemistry they I've had a little bit of audio struggle again I'm only hearing little bits oh no oh no this might be the end of How Discord about- fuck 20 minutes ago and then it settled all right. Hmm. Is it right now, Cam? So I'm not sure. Everyone's still yeah. there? Yeah, we're still here. We're still here. We sound great. Uh, hi, folks. Uh, Phil here. Uh, after the show record, uh, before the edit, uh, just to pop in to explain why the audio goes really weird from this point onwards uh we're recording through discord uh, i think we mentioned it last show having no kind of bit of a discord time it was good it was fun and then uh cam just couldn't could hear anything so cam was gone gave a little bit his internet was still broken to his internet you know he's scotland maybe it's rubbish scottish internet who knows uh so then we thought ah you know what we'll just go back to skype good old dependable skype he's been our you know our good old pal during the entire lockdown process so we went on to there and I could hear flip all uh, the audio was cut out so uh, you've got this combo of the kind of slightly worse Skype uh, audio quality mixed in with the fact that I can't hear anything so I can barely speak um, so yeah it was a bit of a it's going to be a good edit for this one it's going to be a good fun edit but uh, I guess if you're listening to this you would have already heard the edit so far and uh, we will see how it goes after this so uh, yeah, apologies for the uh, change in audio quality. Uh, hopefully, we'll kind of work around this and figure out a better way of doing it so it never happens again. Um, so, yeah, uh, back to somebody speaking who can actually hear somebody else on the Skype call. The Fiend got us, that's what it was. Oh, my God, the fucking Fiend. Ugh. Just yeah. go away and never come back. Anyway, where were we? We were talking about... Um... Christian's finisher, weren't we? Yes. Yeah. Um, the kill switch. I'd never really known it as the kill switch. I was known it as the unprettier. Same. So I was a bit like, why are they talking about kill switch? What the fuck was that all about? When did it become the kill switch? It's I think the kill switch age, doesn't it? That, that's what it was originally called. Yes, then they realised that's a band named the Prager Sued. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Um, just as a suggestion, kill switch never done his theme or anything at any point, did he? No, that was no. the only one did. Christian does like Edge's spear to the very exact movements for it as well. Mm-hmm. They oh, kind of go to the corner and doing the get up, get up thing. Yeah. Actually, it's not the same because Kevin Dunn doesn't cut the fucking camera race, so you miss it. 
<laughs> true. Yeah, true. That is uh, true. The misses the spear. He smacks his shoulder off the corner. Doesn't really matter because later on Christian spits in Orton's eyes, and then Orton in front of the referee kicks Christian well in the bollocks. Yeah. Uh, so therefore gets disqualified, <laughs> and Christian is your new heavyweight champion. What a way to devalue the championship. That is the the only way you can describe it as in that kind of basis as being yeah. absolutely Kicked landed the in the bollards. Yep. And then the Spanish announce table gets it. There's an archeo on a table which does not break. No, nope, uh, that, that's doesn't, that part do feel good. Doesn't break the second time either. <laughs> <Nope. No. laughs> gives it he gives it a good college try the second time, doesn't he? But now that table's not for breaking. Yep. It's, no. it's not happening. It's not happening. Yeah, so this match is okay it's it's all right with a very bad crap finish i did like the, the way they had it worked into the story of um the YD christian put it into the uh the, the the contract for the match and him figuring out how to break randy orton's cool calm demeanor like i didn't mind it like i, I think guess, it is yeah the big spit into his face i think kind of sold it quite well especially when they kind of do like was it like three or four slow motion replays yeah, there's a proper like the, gleb going on, like the proper like <laughs> kind of yeah. spit kind of going on there. So like it's like it kind of make like it storyline wise it makes sense. It's not the best finish, but then like he had the belt for five days and lost dropped to Randy Orton. No, he didn't. He so I think the whole this whole kind of period is a bit kind of not it's, great it's, for the belt anyway. I think no, it's it's a whole transitional period at the moment, and it's just. I feel sorry for Christian because obviously Edge is gone. They're trying to do something with him because his tag partner's gone, but it it just feels forced, and therefore I I can't really get into it. It's Mm. exactly the same as I was was saying. It's the same way they gave Rey Mysterio uh, a Royal Rumble win and a title win because they couldn't give it to Guerrero because he wasn't around anymore. (laughs) Yep. So it just feels that really weird thing where they suddenly decide to give like all the obviously the ideas and the plan they had for one person to another because the first person that, can't do it. Probably without actually changing it that much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's just like it's not really Christian getting the chances because he's Christian. It's Christian getting the chances because Edge can't. <laughs> yeah. And it's just not eh, whatever. It's not great. So we follow up this match with uh, an advert I found ironically hilarious with the WWE BSR anti-bullying campaign. Oh, that did not age well. God, yeah, this. I, I laughed really... and laughed and laughed when I saw this advert. Weird rubbish that they have the whole, yeah. like, you know, but they'll still have, you know, Shane McMahon just appear and a call Braun Strowman stupid. Yeah. Well, this is on the same show. We had, like, Michael Cole just repeatedly calling Daniel Bryan a nerd. Yep. Yep. Yeah, but literally bullying him on there. And everyone's <laughs> yeah. like, hey, kids, kids, don't be a bully now. Don't no. be a bully. Yep. Don't be a bully. Because knowing, knowing it's half a battle, and after they move, he's like, oh, come on. Uh, Jesus just, Christ. Uh, so. This guy. It's time for the moment we've all been waiting it's for. It's time for your main event of the evening. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, and also. Uh, in the crowd shot of the arena during the uh, the beginning of the main event, the best crowd sign of the night, uh, oh. which which said uh, CM Punk is going to Muay Thai kick uh, Tina so hard it'll explode into billions of fruity pebbles. I saw that sign as well. That was, that was an A plus sign. Um, before the match, you can find work a good size. I respect the sign. <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to Justin Roberts, one of the most underutilized announcers in WWE, is now kicking all kinds of ass in AEW. Yes. For all we know, he's still interested in John Cena as we speak. Yeah, it's more like it's more like John yeah. Moxley. I so think good. was it not like thirteen seconds he stretched the Something John out that, for yeah. in one of the Dynamite episodes. <laughs> it's just wonderful. Mm, I think so. that's why Discord gave up the ghost because he knew it was going to have to cope with that at some point. <laughs> yeah, no, pretty much. Yeah, it was. It was packing his bags early. It's like it's like fuck that. Let's go to the lab. Jesus. Anyway, this match, I forget as well for the entrances, there's no cult of personality yet. Nope, not yet. Nope, nope. Pre- whoa, 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 you're saying not yet. You just have to wait one week. Oh, there you go. <laughs> was it not like, wow, was it not like two weeks they waited to bring him back on Raw? It was one week, Cameron. We'll get to it at the end. Was it one week? <laughs> oh, yeah, it was just a week. Oh, my God. 
Because you know they're um, going to have the belt on TV, man. That, that, that's nothing without the belt, and they just had one with a title change with a ball shot. Was it? Was this not the period of time though when spoilers when Punk wins the title? Was there not like one thing where Triple H was at some Comic Con, and then well, they had? Why, CM- why don't we? Why don't we do the match and then do the all aftermath? Right, all right. Okay, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> all, all right, right. Jesus. All right. So, all right, Dad. So CM Punk comes out <laughs> and um, the man's over. Yeah, yeah, I think I think he's a, a little bit popular. This is some, some poppy gets there, isn't it? Still going to be response when I hear this pop because it's so visceral. It's it's Hogan in the eighties kind of style, isn't it? It is, only without the casual racism. Yeah, and it's yeah. like you know Austin in the nineties. It's it's that yeah. level of pop. It's really ridiculous. But and he's if, got the ideal foil for it because Cena gets oh booed yeah, to hell. <laughs> he gets an ECW one night stand welcome. I was going to say that this isn't the first time Cena's been in this situation because we've had 2006 at one night stand, um, the second one but night only stand. Only this time his t-shirt wasn't thrown back five times. Yeah. He plays, he plays the bad guy pretty well, Cena. He does. It's not he even does. as if he's a bad guy. It's just he's just representative of the WWE. So he's, he's the lightning rod for people. Point, yeah, for people who think that wrestling is got sanitized and is safe. Um, as far as its presentation goes, and it's just boring, then they can funnel that through Cena. Because mm-hmm. yeah. at least he kind of realizes it. Because yeah, the way he comes he out, doesn't it. do his salute, doesn't do his usual kind of look at the crowd kind of stuff. No, he, just goes he just to, walks, just walks to the straight ring, straight to the ring. I love yeah. that because he's just like, all right, motherfuckers, you don't like me, I don't like you. Let's get this done. Yeah, let's just get this, just get this gone. Let's just get this over, sort of thing, isn't it? But yeah. it, it baffles me. Even watching this and how good Cena is in these situations against a crowd that effectively wants him dead. Yep. <laughs> how, how, That's That's how fair. did we not ever see a heel Cena? Because of Vince McMahon. But it's like, you know, it's the same thing they've done with Roman Reigns now. It's like, you know, Roman Reigns is a face, forced, Vince's choice, no one liked him, everyone booed him. It was literally just a case of dun, dun, boo. and yeah. then like now, head of the table, still a heel, arrogant cocky get, Paul Heyman by his side. He's fucking amazing Roman Reigns I, right now. I've never liked Roman Reigns and watching Mania didn't really change that opinion of me. Yes, I, I just some of us haven't seen it, don't forget. I'm not saying who won, I'm just saying I, I I don't I just don't get his character. I just don't, and I don't get, I get what his motivations are, but it just doesn't land for me. So any time mm. I see him on screen, I'm like, oh Jesus, he's, he's like the modern day Triple H for me. Every time I see him on the screen, I know I'm going to get about 15 minutes of just bollocks. Can we just yeah, bro, bro, the start raw? Yeah. Can yeah. we can we say though that he's a vast improvement character wise on what he was a year ago? That's hardly an achievement, but yes. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, well, a year ago, obviously, he wasn't wrestling because he walked out on Mania 36. But anyway, um, <laughs> anyway. Um, but it baffles me as to why we never got like a full-on heel Cena that was able to just basically rail against the fans that were booing him. It would have been absolute gold. It would have been good. Um, but anyway, never mind. By the by. Anywho. So you get the wonderful moment where the crowd are chanting, you can't wrestle, and CM Punk mm-hmm. points to him, and everyone's like, no! And no. then points to John Cena, and everyone's like, yeah, him! <laughs> and then Punk's going, all, like, all right, okay. <laughs> So um, also shout out to Colt Cabana who was in the crowd yeah oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. also shout out to the one John Cena fan by the front of the ring oh yes <laughs> wearing like the yeah. John Cena t-shirt and like a white jacket and like that you know incredible that one guy he's like respect because he's like right down the front as well he's not yeah. kind of hiding somewhere yeah. yeah respect you fucking mark <laughs> you get Michael Cole at the start of the match saying that CM Punk has the ability to brainwash people Michael Cole is the absolute Foghorn for Vince McMahon uh-huh. in this match yeah, in Town Country. He always has been. Yeah, but it's so obvious that Vince is like, say this, say this, down the uh-huh. yeah. speaks to him. Because it is all this kind of stuff, you know, oh, this. There's one point where he starts talking about how he would 
betray the WWE universe by walking out on them with the title. And it's like, uh, no. Yeah, King's saying that, isn't he? Saying like, uh, okay, like he's going to betray all these people by walking out on them. Yeah, I, I think this was the start of the whole WWE universe thing. They're not, it's not a universe. We're not planets. Fucking no. stop it. It's it's yeah. But if, if I think it's the idea not that if we're watching superstars, then we are the universe. Oh, yeah, then. oh wow! Fuck off with that. Come I know on. it's shit, but I'm just saying that's maybe the the justification for God it. God Almighty. Well, this is the point, and I think we'll kind of get into it the aftermath and probably Punk's late career is like this point. It's it's the company over the 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 superstars to all the wrestlers isn't yeah. it it's yeah this is the point where it's like no the company's what we get over this that that's the star of the show you people will just kind of slot into where we need you to slot in and nobody gets nobody's bigger than the company yeah. even <laughs> though clearly punk is at this point bigger than the company and yeah. you know but obviously you know we'll talk about the aftermath later because i don't want to get the anger of al on me um <laughs> But um, yeah, I think this is probably this kind of start where it's like, no, we're the big thing by the network, mm-hmm. nine ninety nine. Yeah. It's that kind of feeding into that, isn't it? Yeah. And now ten years later, we've got sixteen hours of TV a week. It feels like um, nobody's watching it. Although I did see that Rod did two million viewers on Monday night with that fucking awful show they put it was on. A terrible episode as well. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us, <laughs> Some of us haven't seen it. <laughs> we just said it was shit. We're not going to say anything. It's the normal kind of like post mania bounce, though, isn't it? Because it's, normally, like uh, the first show after, gets normally the show after the show after is, mania. is good. <laughs> this was not good. Yeah, because normally it's like people, like people come back or there's come some surprises. But we had like the, the Viking Raiders came back. Uh, Some of us haven't remember. seen it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's just move on. Anyway, so, money in the bank 2011. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, the commentary, and this is actually quite good in a way yeah. because Cole's really sort of because he is essentially repeating what Vince is telling him to repeat mm-hmm. he is parroting the entire line for the company I mm-hmm. do it that way um, there's a moment where this there's, there's a lot of high pitched Cena chants and then a lot of mm-hmm. like gruff sounding CM Punk <laughs> yes. chants in response <laughs> which kind of gives Men you which kind of gives you yeah exactly which kind of gives you an, a, the age might be a factor in who you want to win this match um, <laughs> this match starts off really slowly and scientific in comparison to what you think it might have been. Yeah, yeah. We and get like the loudest pop I've ever heard on a hip toss. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> aye, aye. Yeah. Punk gets the first move on Cena, and the crowd just go like, "Right, you go, Punk." Yep. Um, the bit I was sort of referring to earlier on about the the barb that Lawler flings out is mm-hmm. that Cole brings up the fact that um, well, Booker T says something about how he's never won the WWE title. It's the one like title which eluded him and then michael cole just instantly turns around and goes hi jerry you've never won that title either have you oh and then you could there's just Just this long dead silence let me tell y'all really a little bit of something about this championship myself i've won every major title in this business the wwe championship is the only one that has eluded me that title means so much to these men right here in the middle of this ring same with you jerry you've never held the wwe title and your point is let's talk about these guys you can just tell at this point he's just wishing death on him. Yeah, pretty much. Larry at him, hand over the mic going, you fucking yeah. asshole. This, <laughs> this is right <laughs> after... Yeah. This is right before there's a nasty looking bump when CM Punk takes a suplex to the outside. Yeah, that doesn't Over the top yeah. rope. Uh, that did not look like fun. It's also the... Is it like during like when Cena starts doing the five moves of Doom, he does like this kind of shoulder thing. And Punk kind of goes off the back, and that looked quite nasty as well. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, there's a lovely moment as well, just not long after this, where, and the camera completely misses it because of the of course it cut. does. But it's of course uh, it does. Cena, Cena does is about to do the five knuckle shuffle, tries to do the you can't see me thing, leans over, and then Punk kicks him in the head. Yeah, but they can't say the camera completely misses it. Because um, why not? Why do you need to see it? You don't need to see it, Cam. Come on. No, it's you fine. don't need to see that. You bit. can't see me, so you can't see it. You can't ah! see it. Yeah. Um, then it's, we get there's um, a great bit after, there's a great bit after this where it's like I think CM Punk does a crossbody which Cena counters into an AA which is counted into a GTS which is then counted into an STF I've got this and I'll just put crowd go nuts chef's kiss yeah <laughs> that was I really my bit. chef's kiss as well yeah I, I really know, know, a little bracket chef's kiss yeah, it's like, 
it's done perfectly. It's five moves kind of linked together seamlessly into a submission move, and there's like no kind of hitch. There's no kind of issue with it at all. It just yep. goes perfect. It helps. It's not even, it. You can it see helps. Punk did all the work. Cena had to come to the dance yeah, as well, and he did. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, what well, the kind of scene, scene, Cena sucks, and Cena is kind of you know the, this kind of interpretation of like the, the corporation. But at the end of the day, he is a good wrestler. Yes. Like yes. His, like his character may not be good. You know, for what for not necessarily be that well well placed all the time, but like I think after this, like kind of probably in the next five years, I can't even remember how long he's around. But he talked about like his matches with AJ Styles, the stuff he did with the US Open Challenge, the you know, match he had with yep. Kevin Owens, match with, uh, match with Sami Zayn. He was like he was just like doing great match after great match. I've seen it was mm-hmm. a complete but, machine, and I don't think he really yeah. gets as much appreciation because of what he was lumbered with. Because of that character, the because of that character of being just you know the all round good egg, just yeah. like bland baby face. Yeah, and you can probably say there was like the um, uh, the what's it called the kind of the uh, the way he kind of acted around the time of the Nexus and that and that and that, um, that burial of them, that sort of thing. I think there, there probably was some bad blood in the fandom that kind of hung around him for the next kind of three four years. Yeah, totally. And probably also the way like he buried the the uh, the Wyatt family on the WrestleMania a couple of years down the line as well. That probably didn't to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There was there was a moment of being he was the merchandising cash cow, and there was no effort made to damage that at all. No. Mm. So he had to be the golden yeah. boy, or for like you know, I mean, at least, I mean, I've often thought about. It. I mean, what Cena made his debut in what two thousand and two? Yeah. And has only really retired what in the last couple of years, year or so. Was it like was it after his like when he got completely destroyed by Brock? He kind of went on to like a part time schedule. Yeah, yeah that's like, so. like two like 2016 when Brock wiped him out. But yeah, I, I, I mean, but he would still pop up like WrestleManias and that sort of thing, wouldn't he? So yeah, I mean, he mm-hmm. he, he wins his first major title. Uh, about what, 2004, 2005, doesn't he? Uh, but I want to say yes. Yeah, it's because... Um, it's, got, it's got the whole US title run. Yeah, but WrestleMania 21 is when he wins his first world title, isn't it? Yes, so he defends yeah. the US title. Well, sorry, wins the US title from Big Show at 20. At 20, yeah, exactly. Um, so you've got 2005, and he's only really quit, say, what, 2018, 2019? Mm. So he's had a good, what, 13 14 year stretch between winning his first world title. We think yeah. about it like popping in the ring since the Firefly match last year, has he? Since yeah, the, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And even that was sort of a, a bit of a, I want to say, no, it wasn't really an in ring match. It was a match. So, anyway, no. what I'm trying to make the point is that Cena had a good sort of 13 14 year stretch at the top. Whereas even the guys like, you know, Bret Hart wins his first world title in 92 and then he's gone from the WF by 97. Mm. That's five years. Off- you know? Austin runs to the top. Up, Austin, Austin, the top is what four years. Austin four, wins what, years? first world title at ninety eight, and then like is left by two thousand and three. So that's you know again five years. Take a year out of that because he was out of here about. Yeah, exactly. Years. Take a year out of that, you know, because he took his ball and went home by his own admission. So <clears throat> Cena was on top for an extraordinarily length of time. Yeah, you know it's it's crazy to think how. Like on top he was for that length for like thirteen fourteen years. Yeah, I suppose to an extent it's like the company put him there. That makes sense. Well, yeah, and he was to an extent the chosen one you know, in inverted commas. Mm. But even so, Cena is. I don't think Cena gets enough credit for what he did during that time. No, I think that's fair. I think a lot of people saw his gimmick and just saw him as the corporate shell, the merchandise machine. But underneath all that, he could work, and he worked with a very variety yeah, of people. So I, I, I didn't, I, pre- I didn't really enjoy his characters, but I could always appreciate what he did and what he can do in the ring. Yep, completely, completely. Um, but I mean, that, it's it's that which is the foil for this match against Punk, certainly, because yeah. obviously Punk seen as like the courageous anti-corporate straight edge kind of guy in this one um the end obviously comes in this match where vince um stomps down the ring with john laurinaitis and then there's an echo of montreal Mm -hmm. as Uh vince calls for the bell um and then 
Um, Cena cuts it off at the pass because he doesn't want to win that way because he wants to win the honourable way and not like that and then he walks straight into a go to sleep and then he's pinned for the three count and Punk has the um, title in his hands you're kind of thinking at this point that the obvious thing is for Alberto Del Rio to come down and that's exactly what Vince tries to do oh that's quite <laughs> funny yes yeah because yeah. I, I was sort of thinking I didn't remember Alberto Del Rio coming down I was like well, surely this has to be a cash in <laughs> so Alberto Del Rio comes down, gets smacked in the mush with a kick as soon as he just enters the ring. Bell never goes off, and then Punk takes off. You get the wonderful, glorious image of CM Punk blowing Vince a kiss as he disappears up the stairs and celebrates with the fans in the Rosemont Arena at the top of the of the uh, of the gangway. Um, it's a cracking main event. It means mm-hmm. a hell of a lot. It's got a lot of weight behind it. Oh, yeah. Performances are both amazing from both parties. Vince sells this title disappearing over the horizon brilliantly. <laughs> yeah. Because um, the man genuinely looks distraught. Yeah. And uh, he, he remembers what Alundra Blaze did. He does, yeah, he does. <laughs> He's put in the bin. Wow, that's a deep cut right there. Um, I'll so, wait for the Alundra Blaze reference to come in. Yeah. So um, th- this is probably the reason why I picked this show, is because this was probably the most and still remains probably the most important pay-per-view title match in probably the last, well, obviously the last 10 years, because it was 10 years ago coming. Um, uh, there's not many title matches that have this much meaning to them. Weight behind them. Yeah. Mm. Would be my idea. So our our closing shot is Punk celebrating with the masses and just Vince McMahon looking completely crestfallen because his plans have fallen apart. It's a beautiful, beautiful image to end a pay-per-view on. Mm-hmm. I love it. I absolutely love it. Love this match. Love what it meant. Love the build. To be honest, I think this whole pay-per-view kind of eats out on that one match. <laughs> it really does. It really does, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. sadly. But it, a lot of, like, Money in the Bank 2011 are, it, like, displays a lot of the obvious problems that WWE had at that time. Yeah. As well as, you know, this cracking yeah. story. Because you've got your, who are your big stars? Orton, Punk, Cena. And, like, who else on the, on the cards, like, is really at their level? Um, no well, you'd still have Undertaker, but he's True. obviously not it's there not at the minute. The... Yeah, for whatever reason. Just WrestleMania, I suppose, at this point, isn't he? Um, well, no, he had the title the year before, didn't he? Twenty ten. Because I remember him having matches with Kane. Yeah, because Kane won in the bank and then won the title, and they had a Hell in a Cell match and such like. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, they got Paul back. So we're <laughs> not that far off, you know, Taker having the title for a, a sort of extended little while. Mm. <laughs> Who did take a fight in Mania this year? Yeah, but other than that, like... Um, Mania 27 would have been one of the Triple H ones, surely, wasn't it? It's the one where um, Undertaker kept, stayed off telly for a bit to try to say that even though he won the match against Triple H, um, he beat them up so badly that Undertaker had to take some time away, sort of thing. Yeah, WrestleMania, aye. aye that was yeah. the one. See, so, yeah, I was saying, you still... Would Triple H have been kind of part-time by this stage? Probably. I think yeah, so. I yeah, was a bit as well. By yes. 2011, definitely. I think he was he was very much sort of starting to get into his backstage roles now. So yeah, he wouldn't have had much. Edge obviously he would have had, but he's yeah. just recently had to quit. Yeah, but in fact, like you think about it, the next I think the next two WrestleManias are headlined by The Rock and Cena, aren't they? Yeah, it's die 28 and 29. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah, like putting that next big star up the top you know you've obviously people have well, got but nearly got there Daniel Bryan did but obviously then he's had his injuries they tried to put Roman Reigns up there but you know no one liked him <laughs> there's <laughs> a backlash to that yeah <laughs> there's like long stretches with Brock as the champion yeah and then yeah so uh, the, yeah it's like Lesnar will come back a year later 2012 won't it Lesnar's mm-hmm. back which at the time seemed very fresh and new and then quickly got boring <laughs> yeah it did so yes, so, so the aftermath. We want the aftermath. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's go. Let's do the aftermath. Well, the aftermath was they decided to crown a new champion by having a tournament the next night on Raw. Yes. And, uh, during that tournament, I think it was the eight people in the Money in the Bank, or most of the people in the Money in the Bank. Uh, but then Dolph Ziggler, for some reason, was in it anyway. Uh, the final was the Miz and Mysterio, I think. I think. I seem to remember uh, Mysterio being in it, yeah. 
and they decided they would have the the match the very next uh, the next week on Raw instead. But you're right. During the week, they had a few CM Punk things. Uh, the event, I think you want about Cam, there was a Mattel promotion. I think is where he turned up. Is it not like the Wizard World thing they have? It might have been something like that. It was on behalf of Mattel. That's all I remember. Yeah, I do remember this. Yeah. And I think he did go to some independent show as well, but he didn't bring the belt with him. Oh, so, why uh, would you not bring the belt with you? I don't know. Um, but the problem was, they should have dragged this out for a good month or so. They really should have milked it. It should have been about six months. But instead, the very next week on Raw, we had our final, uh, Rey Mysterio against The Miz. That was like the opening match. And then Vince decided that Mysterio had to defend against Cena on the same night, because that's fair. So your main event was uh, Mysterio against um, Cena, and Cena won, and he's celebrating in the ring. And then for the first time in the WWE, we hear Cult of Personality hit the... Um, hit the, uh, uh, the, the, the... What's the word I'm up for? Speakers, that's the word I'm up for. Yeah, that's the one, yeah. Uh, and um, the fans, I'm sure some fans are clued up, because I think he used the music in the indies. But I think he used it in Ring of Honor, yeah. Yeah, quite a lot of the um, the arena didn't really know, and Cena was selling it like he didn't know. And then eventually Punk came out, and that was that. And he came to the ring with his belt, and John Cena had the new title he just won, and then that set up a match at SummerSlam. Which seems extraordinarily rushed. <laughs> yep. Well, Dave, I don't know if anyone remembers the classic SummerSlam encounter, but it was finished with uh, Kevin Nash interfering. Oh, oh my yeah. God. That was the one with, you know, the, the, the he got the text message saying, stick the winner. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. And it was who oh, the text Jesus. message came from, and then it was supposed to be a Triple H thing. You know, oh, God. <sighs> anyway. Sorry, anywho. Where is this going to go in our table? I was just thinking that. Oh, I forgot about the table scenario. So it's it's definitely not going to be challenging the top. I think we know no, that. No, I think it's definitely it, it's a one, It is a one-match show. Like it is a one-match show, yeah, definitely. It in, in fantastic. Maybe the pay-per-view was good at the time, because I think ladder matches weren't done to death then, but we mm, it. it was. I yeah. just felt you know, ladder matches are so done to death now. I think it's probably around the level of Invasion 2001. Mm. Which is number seventeen. What's yeah. just below? It? Just below that is uh, Survivor Series 1990. What's above it? Above that is Living Dangerously 1989. I did not watch that show. What no. was above that one? Above that is WrestleBorn 92 with the World Games match. Yeah, it's oh, nowhere well, near that. that. That's, a, nope. that's a one match show as well, isn't Pretty it? Pretty much, yeah, but it's a really, really, really good match. One match. Um, well, I would put it in between. I don't. I don't know the ECW one. You'll have to discuss that. But yes, I would put it just after the War Games one. But whether the ECW show comes before it would be up to you guys. I okay. don't remember much about the Living Dangerous in '99. I couldn't really name a match off that again off the top of my head. Um, is it better Slow than SummerSlam '93? I've got Rumble uh, 89 there as well. WrestleMania 5 is at number 21. Yeah, uh, I've always got tough spots for these old shows, so you can't listen yeah. to them. Mm, yeah. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's put it in below Invasion 2001, because Invasion 2001 had a couple of matches on it. It had at a least couple that. of doozies, yeah. Well, okay, so let's, let's stick it in. There. Yeah, in between... Yeah, below Invasion 2001, but above Survivor Series 1990. So, as Phil would say, uh, WWE Money in the Bank 2011 is the 17th best pay-per-view of all time. But it is scientific fact. Scientific fact. Yes. And now the moment we're all waiting for. What are we watching this month? So, and that's up to me. So, yes. I decided that... We, we've we been doing a lot of WWE recently, and I decided that it was time to see what was going on over with Uncle Ted. And I was having a look around at a couple of shows, and I wanted to basically see, before WCW jumped the shark, what was their last sort of main big show that had a lot of press about it? Mm -hmm. And that show turned out to be the 1999 Spring Stampede. Okay which is the main event of a four corners match uh, involving DDP, Ric Flair, Hollywood Hogan and Sting with Kev with uh, Randy Savage as a special guest referee. Oh, bloody hell. 
And this one is significant because, spoilers, this is the show where DDP is crowned champion. Right. Okay. And it also contains an absolutely banging Rey Mysterio versus uh, Billy Kidman match for the Cruiserweight Championship. That sounds pretty cool, actually. Also, Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko against Raven and Perry Saturn. All right. Uh, Scott Steiner versus Burger T for the US Heavyweight Championship. All right, okay. Uh, Disco Inferno, unfortunately. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you, know, you know it's WCW when a hardcore match is your opening match. Sounds good. Sounds so, intriguing. Spring Stampede 1999. That's where we're going next. Okay, all right. Fair enough. Hey, have we not done a lot of non-WE pay-per-views recently, just to put that in there? Well, I... I well... I'm not saying you should change your mind. I've just said, have we not literally done WCW, TNA, uh, quite, quite We've recently? We've just done a WWE one. Yeah, I'm saying that was the one. But then previously, have we not just done um, two WCW ones and a TNA one? Well, yeah, but as I like sometimes, you know, it's good to have ones that you haven't seen. And I don't think I've ever seen this one. I've not seen Spring Stampede 99. Well, I don't think I've seen it either, but I'm just, I'm just looking at it. No, I know, I, know I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. So, before technology gives up in all of us all together, we probably should just wrap this up. Is Phil actually managed to rejoin us? I don't think so. I think Shell is dead. That's I am a... back. I don't know if you can oh. hear me or what's going on. I can hear Hi. you. Yes, we can hear you. Do you want to know what we're watching next, Phil? All I heard was WCW in the late 90s, and I was like, oh, God. But I'm, <laughs> I'm game. We're, we're going to watch WCW Spring Stampede 1999. Is it the actual one you actually meant to pick you in? Like you haven't done it. You it haven't is. pulled what's now known as a fill. I, I've not done a Halloween Havoc. No. <laughs> you no, have, not you the, wrong the wrong one. No, I, I, I've pulled out the one that is known as the last great WCW pay-per-view before they just went down the tubes. Nice. So I've seen I've seen Uncensored, which must be the one before this. I think it is. Yes. That's the one I've seen with the barbed wire steel cage match. The barbed wire, the, sorry, the barbed wire steel cage first blood match because you can't have enough gimmicks. <laughs> when when Ric Flair bleeds within the, like the first minute of the match, but the ref still doesn't stop the match. Yeah, yes. yeah. It's, well, that's, it's beyond. It's beyond stupid. Isn't that, isn't that just like the new typical flare match anyway? Like he comes to the ring, <laughs> locks up, blades, styling uh, the profile in, it's the wonderful. ring. Dead. Dead. So, is it my pick after Ewan's? I think so. I think it will be. Yeah, it must be. Let's have a look at the schedule. I believe it is because it's I like. It is well. Uh, what's me up coming? There's me up coming. Uh, yeah. It's Cam, Ewan, me. Then it's back to you, Al. Oh, okay. So, hang on. What? So, so. Cam, I'm really confused here. So it's Cam and you and then back to me. Yeah, yeah, because you were you were first last oh, time. Oh, hang on, you're saying Cam's, so Cam doesn't pick again next time. You're saying yeah. it's Cam's pick, then you win's pick, which we're doing next time, and then yeah. my. So I am next. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, then me, then you, yeah. then then you, and then after the next batch, it's you and Phil, Al, Cam, and then me, Al, Cam, you and. You should really put this list in the Discord. <laughs> well, I won't give you any spoilers, but I've already selected my show. Oh, boy. All right, okay. I think Phil's gone again. Yep, Phil is deceased. Is Phil gone? I think he has. Oh, my God. Get gone for me again. <laughs> All right, well... Like I say, before we get sucked into some weird interdimensional fuck the internet. <laughs> I, you know, there's, should... there's a small there's a small comfort in for me that it's not just me <laughs> tonight that's had this problem. Yeah. So I guess as Phil is demanding quite violently thanks to uh, the ones of Skype, we shall end with the following words tonight. Fuck the internet. Yeah. Good night. Probably so. Good night. Good night. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
No, I can hear you perfect. It's just Cam seems to be the one with the issue. Mm. So shall we fire him and just continue the podcast on that basis? Oh, don't fire him. That's not nice. <laughs> well, he can't hear me, so it's fine. <laughs>